If you had the choice, would you choose to go back to the past or would you choose to go to the future? Some would say the past, as especially for the environment, it was in a much better state. And others would say they'd prefer to travel to the future, purely out of curiosity. But as a young changemaker, I've learned to look at where we are right now. Specifically, amongst Gen Z, we prioritize creating a reality in the present moment. And we do this by combining the knowledge of the past to imagine the future we can be proud of. And this focus on the present moment is so important because we're moving faster than ever and we know that we have a ticking clock when it comes to climate change. We could spend hours talking about the numbers, facts, and data around emissions and population growth, but as Gen Z, we know we do not have time to waste, and the facts are there. They define our reality. Knowledge is power, and yet, there is something we're not doing right. 23 years ago, when I was born, the world population was around 6.1 billion people. Today, just a mere two decades later, the world population is at 8 billion and growing. All of these people, in such a short time, a steady and sure growth on one shared planet. How do we live in balance? This was something that fascinated me already at age 12, when I first learned about the climate crisis and saw the environment around me being destroyed, I decided to take action. My sister and I started Bye Bye Plastic Bags and worked with many like-minded organizations to push for our island home of Bali to be plastic bag free. Since then, I've dedicated more than 10 years to change. That's about half of my life. That's a lot of time. I've learned so much about change and I think in many ways we've progressed, but at the same time, we have these traditional systems pushing all ideas of change further down the timeline and activists and scientists holding up a megaphone to the ticking clock. So why are we not getting it right? Why are we letting all this time pass and repeating the same mistakes or not seeing real scalable change? Here's what I think. You see, I work with a global community of young changemakers. At Youthtopia, we are hundreds of young changemakers with our own projects and our own track record of change coming together to share best practices and ideas. We believe in community-powered solutions. We practice transparent and clear communications, and we often give honest feedback and peer review. We're hopeful and frustrated at the same time, driven by love and anchored by realities of fear. It's a tough job to be a change maker these days, especially at a young age. But our vision is clear and it is strong. We believe that change is possible. In fact, it is necessary. We won't solve the problem with the same thinking that created it. And the best part about young change makers is that we don't wait for permission or until we are older to start making changes. Exciting, right? What struck me though is that the majority of our starting stories begins after we graduate or during the time we were at school, but then outside of our classrooms, on our own time. This is dangerous for the time we're living in because, well put simply, it is time wasted. Each country differs, but on average, a young person spends about six to seven hours daily in their classrooms from middle school through to graduation. For so many of us that say youth is our biggest untapped resource, we have to look at the systems we grow up in. How do we create classrooms to be more engaging, more empowering, more creative and relevant to the time we're living in? Of course, there are schools that are doing incredible work and leading this change forward. Take the Living School in Australia, for example, or the Green School in New Zealand, or the one in Bali, which I attended. The Copenhagen International School in Denmark, and the Punahou School in Hawaii. Each of these schools get it. Their classrooms are designed to connect us with nature. They make us children a relevant stakeholder in the future of our planet. 
Imagine a world where our classrooms are places of celebration of our individual strengths and collective vision. Imagine we would move away from competition to collaboration. Imagine we are taught to create and ask well-structured questions instead of memorizing predefined answers. Imagine a world where we valued our environmental and emotional awareness as much as economic success and mathematical intelligence. If our classrooms taught the SDGs alongside the alphabet, imagine the larger understanding of ourselves and the world around us we would have at a young age already. The point is, changing the ways we learn will grow our imagination. It will change the way we shape our narratives and the way we move forward with the systemic change we need and not stay stuck in time. So far, based on the ways that we have been learning, I've come across three main narratives around climate change and sustainability. The first one is thinking we have to go back to the past. The second, thinking we have to reinvent the wheel in the future. And lastly, thinking that change cannot start with us right now. Let's start with the first two, a past-focused mindset and a future-focused mindset. Both, to some extent, need to happen, but we're forgetting the best part of both things. Going back to the past can teach us what we do not want to repeat, and at the same time, remind us of things that worked well and could work again. And going into the future with the new inventions and the new wheel is necessary, especially when we see old systems and values no longer serving the greater good. Let's look at an example. Plastic bags, a product only invented a few decades ago and has managed to take over our modern day lifestyle. A common reaction when I campaigned for a plastic bag free Bali was, but Malati, you want us to stop using plastic and what? Go back to banana leaves only? The key word here being only. Sometimes we need to unlearn in order to learn. We forget that before plastic existed, we thrived with so many alternatives, one of them being banana leaves and another being woven baskets. Especially here in, with the Balinese having some of the best craftsmanships in the world. And of course, many other reusable bags of many non-plastic kinds. But there's a disconnect between how we look at the past and how to bring it to the present. You see, we don't have to let the past define the future. Looking back to the solutions used in the past doesn't mean going back to caveman days. It's an opportunity and a reminder to what was once possible. Like Trihita Karana, for example, a traditional way of life for the Balinese. Practiced for generations, it is the belief that a balanced life consists of living in harmony with the natural world, the community around you, and the self-awareness within. Something deeply embedded in our culture and through time is being forgotten. Something worth learning again. Then we can see the other side of the story for the ones with the future-focused mindset. We would see this trend of using science and technology to invent all sorts of new alternatives to plastic bags. We've seen algae, mushrooms, organic waste matter all being used to create plastic-like materials, but then more friendly with the environment. These future-thinking startups often hit roadblocks and fail to scale because of funding, infrastructure, connections, and lastly, the good old-fashioned systems not supporting the growth of something new. And this leads me to the third and final narrative that people get stuck in. It's the negative narrative. The belief that if we cannot, we will not, we should not, we could not. It's sometimes easier to think, why should I, one person, do anything at all? But the thing is, we don't need a hundred perfect activists, but millions of imperfect ones. We just need to get started in the roles that we are in right now. A parent, a teacher, a company employee, a young person from Bali, or you. Everyone can be a change maker. And yes, change takes time, but the lesson that I've learned is that it also takes commitment. It takes many people and it takes vision and focus. Think about it like this. Earth has been in existence for four and a half billion years, give or take about 50 million years. Modern civilization as we know it is a mere 12,000 years old. 
So if the Earth's existence represents a 24-hour day, we humans have dwelled here for only a fraction of a second. And in that time, we have significantly compromised the natural resources that keep us alive. If we can change the way we look at time, we can change the way we use our time. Every one of us can be a change maker. So let's start today. Because after 10 years as a full-time change maker, there is that one thing I know for sure. We have no time to waste. Thank you.